hi everyone, Anthony Fantano here, the internet's busiest music nerd. Hope you're doing well. And it's time for another edition of Let's Argue, where I go on the internet, I accept your hot takes, your unpopular opinions, and your tough questions. I do that voluntarily for some reason. And then I respond to the best ones literally in this episode. Now this episode is a special one because we came into this episode with a focus, with a laser focus, which some of you in the posts asking you for your opinions completely ignored, but that's fine. Most of you were on the ball. Most of you had your eyes on the prize. I asked you, in your opinion, what, what album is the most overrated album, or at least one of the most overrated albums, and why? And now I'm going to respond to the ones that I thought were were good. My beautiful dark twisted fantasy, because it has too many features. I think Kanye employs his features pretty well on that record for the most part. The Chris Rock feature is, is really the worst one. Uh, the one that is completely useless on the entire record. I mean, Dude even gave Psy High a moment to shine uh, in a way that uh, added to the album quite a bit. So. I don't know. You guys already know that I'm pretty skeptical when it comes to my beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy hype and that I have been consistently critical of the record over the years, but, 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 I don't know if the features are my least favorite or one of the, the worst things about it. One of the things I'd really, uh, say, takes away from the quality of the record. A record really has too many features or leans too much on its features when you feel like you're getting distance between yourself and the artist that the album is named after. It no longer feels like that artist's album because the features are taking too much space, they're taking too much priority, but I can't say that's the case on that record. You know, through and through, even with all the features, My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy feels like Kanye's album, Kanye's expression, he's directing every moment and everything on it, even those featured spots. Okay, for real though, Dial It is extremely overrated. I played it once and it actually gave me headaches. I, I mean, th there are a lot of issues that you could have with Dial It. It's not very lyrical, it's kind of repetitive, and uh, sonically it's a little thin, but I, I, have a, I have a hard time imagining someone getting a headache to it. It's not very abrasive. It's not very noisy. I don't know, if you got a headache to it, that's very sad, but uh, I, don't, I don't think that's a... Uh, the strongest argument against it. One of my favorite albums, Lightning Bolt's Hyper Magic Mountain, gives me a fucking headache all the time and I love it. Arcade Fire Funeral, uninspired album with terrible production that tried too hard to be artsy. Okay, I guess the production isn't like the best of any indie album of that era. I mean, certainly uh, Sufjan Stevens had better production on his shit. However, I mean, like great high quality, super clear production was not necessarily like um, the driver of what was good and popular in indie music around that time. In fact, uh, having a, a slightly disheveled sound could be to your benefit. I mean, look at Neutral Milk Hotel. And that being said, Funeral isn't even like the most lo-fi indie record out there. There are tons of songs off of that album that still sound rich and wonderful, instrumentally dense, and trying too hard to be artsy. Yeah, that, that was that was just kind of part of the course for most of the indie bands around that time that were making so many waves. I mean, uh, look at the Decemberist picaresque. That's like the quintessential wear an indie band trying to be too artsy, but that record fucking rages anyway. There's an amazing sea shanty on that record that you should listen to if you haven't. The Money Store. Just really harsh listening, especially if you're going to give Lil Pump a 7 just because you enjoy listening to it. By that logic, the money store is a four? Whose brain works this way? Whose brain operates in this fashion? Like, obviously if I give the money store a 10, the harshness of the record is an enjoyable quality to me, so I enjoy the fact that it's harsh. On top of that, it's not even Death Grip's most harsh or disorienting project. I mean, that would be uh, the powers that be. I mean, there are tons of, like, SoundCloud rappers screaming their brains out over, like, blasted out trap beats that are way more distorted than any number of tracks off of the Money Store now. So in the grander scheme of things, it's not even that harsh of a record anymore. I mean, for its time, sure. And I still think it's a great album. Certainly a groundbreaking record with a lot of great catchy songs off of it. But, uh, I mean, as, as time has progressed, I mean, the aggression and volume that Death Grips have brought to the table has now become in a way the new normal so I mean I don't know dude you, you must just be listening to, to easy listening shit all day or like these woozy ass trap songs that just are like bleh, 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 bleh. 
<laughs> Melancholy and the Infinite Sadness, way too many songs with lackluster songwriting and overall just feels like a disjointed record. Also feels like a step down from Siamese Dream. Uh, um, I, I, th I think it's a very good album, but I, I could see how one would interpret the, the record as being uh, more all over the place, not as cohesive a statement as Smashing Pumpkins' more trimmed down projects, but uh, it's, it's certainly better than a door. It's certainly better than their debut. You know, it's certainly not one of their worst records. And if somebody were to tell me they thought Melancholy was like their favorite or they thought it was the best, I mean, it's a pretty ambitious undertaking, and most of it pans out. I wouldn't say it's a, a record that I'd be like, <laughs> you're liking it too much. Melancholy has a legend status that I would argue is, is very well deserved. Lupe Fiasco's The Cool. It's an all right album, but man has that album aged incredibly bad. Some of the songs like Little Weapon and High Definition sound like the definitions of 2000s pop rap. I mean, they do, but that's not entirely a bad thing, but I, I will agree that Lupe Fiasco's The Cool, as much as I do have a soft spot for that record because I vividly remember the time that that album came out and the way hip-hop sounded around that time, um, yeah, m maybe in retrospect it is something that you kinda had to be there for. You know, not all 2000s pop rap was bad. And as far as poppy hip-hop songs during that era go, Lupe Fiasco, you could do a lot worse. Metallica's Black Album is only so highly rated because of its relative accessibility, and is significantly weaker in entry than Master of Puppets in Justice For All. Its success was the beginning of their death spiral. I guess you could say the success of the album was the beginning of the band's death cycle, uh, but also you have to take into account that Metallica was sitting in the midst of uh, a changing musical landscape, and certainly in the music industry there's going to be pressure to keep up with the shift away, generally, uh, across the rock community, uh, from thrash to more of these groove metal sounds. And, I mean, okay, it's highly rated because of its relative accessibility, uh, yeah, uh, it's, it's, uh, beloved by a lot of people because it's easy for a lot of people to love. It's just a really good quality, hard rockin', catchy ass record. But come on, man. It is not worse than Justice For All. The production on Justice For All is fucking trash. Like, literally every Metallica album up until that point, even the debut, sounds amazing in comparison to And Justice For All. Every Tool album, nobody cares, you put math in your music, it sounds better on paper than in practice. I don't know, man, there are quite a few math rock groups out there, literally math rock groups, that sound really good, number one, and number two. <sighs> Math is kind of already in music, whether you're tool and like trying to do like the fucking Fibonacci code, like over a 1746 time signature or whatever, or you're just, I don't know, the Strokes playing Is This It for the 50 millionth time, uh, math is in all music. It's, it's, it's all like math and shit. I guess it's just a matter of whether or not you're doing uh, addition or like um, calculus. Blonde is one of the most overrated albums ever. Many of the songs feel unfinished and empty with zero drums. It has a couple of good singles, but it is not well-rounded and highly overrated. I mean, I love Blonde. However, there is a part of me that doesn't quite get the, like, it's the best album ever. It's the best album of the decade. Oh my God like attitude. I still think at this point Frank Ocean has room to grow and I mean that in terms of uh, uh, not only his singing but his songwriting too. His new single DHL does leave me a little worried though. Still having said all of that, I think Blonde is an aesthetically unique record. I think there are a lot of personal uh, songs on that album and Frank Ocean does carry in right uh, some really effective tunes all over the record and yeah it's it's not a very rhythmic album but I think that's one of the qualities that makes it kind of unique it just feels like a very intimate personal moody series of uh, melodic vignettes some stronger than others but for the most part it's it's a pretty potent project and I I love it Trout Mask Replica is only popular because places like you overhype it to a disturbing degree okay um well, uh, a couple of things. One, uh, before MU was even a thing, Trout Mask Replica was a pretty widely celebrated and talked about album. Uh, so I don't think you could chalk the popularity of it up to uh, a, a message board on the internet 
uh, liking it and talking about it a lot because Captain Beefheart was already a very well established artist with a fan base and uh, legend status and Trout Mask Replica was already widely accepted and known to be one of the weirdest albums of all time. So there's that. Part two is that, um, look, MU only loves the record, and look, I, I know there are probably people on MU and, and were on MU around the time when Trout Mask was talked about the most, uh, who genuinely enjoy the record. But for the most part, MU hypes that record up because it is so loaded with meme potential. There are so many ridiculous, absurd fucking lyrics all over that record that you could just repeat over and over and over and just throw out of context onto an image board with a silly picture and it'll get laughs, it'll get responses, it'll get engagement. In a lot of ways, it's like the ultimate troll album. Of course, people on MU would like identify with it heavily because it just has a very absurd, weird, mimetic type of attitude before memes were even a thing. It's pre-meme, it's proto-meme, it's proto-meme music. The Dark Side of the Moon, while it may have sounded revolutionary at the time, it's nowhere near as ambitious or musically complicated as Wish You Were Here, Animals, or The Wall. Plus, it being a concept album and calling recurring elements a motif isn't really an excuse for most of the songs and chord progressions sounding the same. Oh, God. Apply ice to the burn. Oh, apply ice to the burn. It's still one of their better records, though. Apply ice to the burn. All right, I guess this has been the episode of Let's Argue. Thank you for watching. Those are all of the overrated records, or at least some of them that you guys suggested, and those are my responses. Over here next to my head is another video that you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, let's argue forever.